to the online service from the East Solent and Downs Methodist Circuit here in the south of England. Thank you for joining us. It's good that you've been able to do so. Whoever you are and wherever you are, it's good that we can worship the true and living God, to listen to his word, to pray for others and for ourselves, and to remember and rejoice in together the great salvation story that we are living in. Our Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. And in our reflection, we'll be thinking about the significance of the baptism of Jesus. Why did Jesus, who was sinless, need to be baptised? Firstly then, a prayer for the new year. In our New Year Covenant service last week, we were reminded that we are to continue to have faith in God, in both the good times and the challenging times. Whatever the year may bring, we commit ourselves to remain faithful, for God always remains faithful to us. Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, remind us, remind us to rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us all. So we pray, as we go forward together in this new year, in love, faith and fellowship. Creator God, we praise you for this new year, for opportunities to worship together and online, for this moment in our lives. Creator God, we praise you for all that you have made, for all that you have given, for all that you have promised. Redeemer God, we praise you for the new life found in Christ, for the chance to begin again, for the story of salvation. Redeeming God, we praise you for your grace that is without limit, for your love which knows no end, for your living among us. Sustainer God, we praise you for the gift of your Spirit, for the outpouring of your love, for the fruits of our relationship with you. Of praise, hear the love of Christ shall end. 
Prayer of Confession, of saying sorry to God. The response to Lord be merciful is, forgive us our sin. Holy Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonestly failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to your truth, strengthen us to do your will, and give us the joy of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we think on God's love for each and every one of us, we have a prayer of adoration. The response is, Blessed be your name. Lord Jesus Christ, you have walked where we walk, 
and now you help us in our weakness. Blessed be your name. Lord Jesus Christ, you've been tempted as we have, and now you come to help us in our danger. Blessed be your name. Lord Jesus Christ, you have suffered for us, and now you help us when we reach our wit's end. Blessed be your name. Lord Jesus Christ, you were deserted and betrayed, and now you are with us when all others have gone. Blessed be your name. Lord Jesus Christ, companion Christ, friend and saviour, we adore you, we love you, we need you. Help us to follow. Amen. Our Gospel reading is from St Matthew, chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. The Baptism of Jesus Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptised by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptised by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfil all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptised, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Our reading from St Matthew is the account of the baptism of Jesus. It's recorded in the other Gospels, in Mark, Luke and referenced to in John 1, where we have John's testimony. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptise with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptises with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. In our reflection for this service, I'd like us to focus on the significance of the baptism of Jesus for Christians. Jesus' baptism by John at the Jordan River is the first recorded act of Jesus' public adult ministry. Let's look at some of the details. We are told in the various accounts that one day Jesus comes to be baptised, taking his place in the line of John's converts. After Jesus had been baptised, the Spirit of God descends like a dove, like a dove coming down and settling on him. We should note the gentleness of God as seen in the Holy Spirit, who came down to Jesus in the form of what is traditionally considered the gentlest of birds, a dove. The dove has become a symbol of peace and is regarded as an affectionate bird, innocent of any vicious ways. The voice of God is heard, declaring that Jesus is his Son, whom he loves and he is pleased with. The descent of the Spirit and God's affirming, loving words Commission Jesus for his life's work. From this point on, Jesus embarks on the mission 
and ministry of the Messiah, God's servant king. That is what happened, but we need to delve deeper and ask what questions we need to consider as we try to understand the baptism of Jesus. John's baptism was baptism of repentance. But Jesus was sinless and had no need of repentance. So we need to ask, why is Jesus being baptised? At first glance, it may seem that Jesus coming to be baptised has no real purpose at all. As John sees Jesus waiting in the line of converts, recognising him as the one who is far greater than he is, you can almost hear John saying, Wow, hang on, I need to be baptised by you, and you're coming to me to be baptised? It should surely be the other way round, says John, or thinks John. John was certainly taken aback at Jesus coming to him. John recognised his own sin and was in need of repentance himself. And he thought he considered himself to be unfit to baptise the spotless Lamb of God. Listen to Jesus' reply in Matthew's account as to why he should be baptised. Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfil all righteousness. Then John consented. By being baptised, Jesus takes his stand with all who belong to the true Israel, those who obey God from their hearts. Now let's then Consider the several reasons why Jesus at his baptism said, It is proper for us to do this, to fulfil all righteousness. Reason 1. Why it was proper or fitting that Jesus should be baptised. Jesus was at the beginning of his public ministry. He was about to embark on his great work and it was appropriate that he be recognised publicly by his forerunner, John the Baptist. John, the voice crying in the wilderness, prophesied by Isaiah, calling to people to repent in preparation for their Messiah. By baptising Jesus, John was declaring to all that here was the one they had been waiting for, the Son of God, the one he had predicted would baptise with the Holy Spirit and fire. Reason 2. Why it was fitting that Jesus should be baptised. His baptism showed that Jesus identified with sinners. His baptism symbolised the sinner's baptism into the righteousness of Christ, dying with him and rising free from sin to be able to walk in the newness of life. His perfect righteousness will fulfil all the requirements of the law for sinners, for sinners who could never hope to do so on their own. Remember Jesus' words? It is proper for us to do this to fulfil all righteousness. By this, Jesus is pointing to the righteousness that he provides to all who come to him to exchange their sin for his righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says this, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. 
we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Reason 3 why it was fitting that Jesus should be baptised. Jesus coming to John showed his approval of John's baptism, bearing witness to it, that it was from heaven and approved by God. This would be important in the future when others would begin to doubt John's authority, particularly after his arrest by Herod. Reason four, and perhaps most importantly, the reason why it was fitting that Jesus should be baptised. The occasion of the public baptism was recorded for all generations to come. The perfect embodiment of the triune God revealed in glory from heaven. Jesus' baptism was the scene of the very first recorded appearance of the Trinity to humankind. The Son was baptised, the Father spoke, and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. The Father's command, the Son's obedience, and the Holy Spirit's empowerment, present for us in a beautiful picture of the life and ministry of Christ. Yes, indeed, the testimony directly from heaven of the Father's pleasure with the Son and the descending of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus provide us with a beautiful picture of the Trinity of God and Jesus' identity as the long-awaited Messiah was confirmed by God himself, who spoke from heaven. This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. It also depicts the work of the Father, Son and Spirit, in the salvation of those Jesus came to save. The Father loves the elect, from before the foundation of the world. He sends his Son to seek and save the lost, and the Spirit convicts of sin and draws the believer to the Father through the Son. All the glorious truth of the mercy of God through Jesus Christ is displayed at his baptism. John's was a baptism of repentance and although Jesus did not need such a baptism, he wanted it to be done in order to identify himself with sinners. Jesus would soon bear humankind's sins on the cross where he would exchange his righteousness for their sin, for our sin. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. It's interesting to note that although Christian baptism was used by John the Baptist, baptism itself did not originate with Christians or, for that matter, with John. Jews practice baptism. Bible scholars suggest it as a traditional act of purification and the initiation of converts to Judaism long before the coming of the Messiah. This is not the time to talk about the various different stances on baptism 
that Christian denominations take in our day. Whatever our heritage of faith, we need to understand that the baptism of Jesus symbolised his death and his resurrection. It prefigured and lends importance to Christian baptism and publicly identified Christ with those for whom he would die. John's baptism of repentance did follow, as I said earlier, the model of cleansing used by Jews. Although the final cleansing from sin is only available through Christ, and John's baptism was the foreshadowing of that. The significance of the ceremony of baptism in the New Testament and therefore for us, is that as believers in Jesus Christ, we are baptised into his death and raised to walk in newness of life. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through the baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Jesus taught the significance of baptism to the extent that he himself was baptised by John the Baptist at the start of his ministry. And whenever or wherever we were baptised, it's important to reflect on it, to remember that it has happened and that it has made a difference. Through our baptism, we begin a lifelong journey of faith to become beloved sons and daughters of God. The Church offers the framework for us to journey together, to journey together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. A journey that God promises to share with each and every one of us.
We come to our intercessions, our prayers for others. During the intercessions there will be opportunities, short opportunities, for silent prayer. Loving God, we pray for your church, for all those baptised into the household of faith. Come, Holy Spirit, come to your people. Comfort us, encourage us, fire us with your love. We pray for the worldwide Methodist Church, for the ministers, for the local and visiting preachers, for stewards and all those in leadership roles. Come, Holy Spirit, come to your people, comfort us, encourage us, fire us with your love. We pray for the needs of the world, for the poor, the hungry, those caught up in conflict, for the powerless, persecuted, for the exploited or oppressed. Come, Holy Spirit, come to your people, comfort us, encourage us, fire us with your love. We pray for the church in our communities, for a unity that is a witness to the love of Christ, for a continuing and deeper concern to meet human needs. Come, Holy Spirit, come to your people, comfort, encourage us, fire us with your love. We pray for those especially known to us, for those who are ill, for those who are mourning, for those of us who are anxious at the beginning of this new year, 
and what the year might bring. Come, Holy Spirit, come to your people. Comfort us, encourage us, fill us with your love. We pray for ourselves that we may remain faithful to the baptismal promises that we made, that we may hold fast to your promises to us. Come, Holy Spirit, come to your people, comfort us, encourage us, fire us with your love. We ask these prayers in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our brother and our Saviour. Amen. We draw our prayers together as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
again, thank you for joining us. If you'd like to contact the Digital Church team for comments or prayer requests, please use the contact email that is on the screen now and will be repeated on the last screen of this programme. A New Year Plan, written by Mary Fairchild. I tried to think of a clever new phrase, a slogan to inspire the next 365 days, a motto to live by this coming new year, but the catchy words fell flat to my ear. And then I heard this still small voice saying, consider this simple daily choice. With each new dawn and close of day, make new your resolve to trust and obey. Don't look back, caught in regret, or dwell on the sorrow of dreams unmet. Don't stare forward, anchored by fear. No, live in this moment, for I am here. I am all you need, everything, I am. You are held secure by my strong hand. Give me one thing, your all in all. Into my grace, let yourself fall. So, at last, I'm ready. I see the way. It's to daily follow, trust and obey. I enter the new year armed with a plan to give him my everything, all that I am. We pray. To the one whose goodness is without equal, whose love and care is beyond comparison, whose mercy is beyond understanding, and whose power is beyond words. Be praise and glory now and always. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us this day and with those for whom we have prayed. Amen.